Hey guys, welcome back to the Cora Elise show where you get to laugh, learn and grow with me every single week. Hope we're all doing well. Today I have Vaughn Lee joining me who is a former UFC fighter. This was a great episode for those who are interested in UFC and MMA and also those who might be thinking of taking up a fighting style or sport or possibly just wanting to know a little bit more and what's involved. Vaughn shares his experiences with UFC and MMA, all the martial arts that he has taken part in and how he got spotted for UFC. He also talks about the many, many risks that come with being a UFC fighter and the injuries that can be involved. Unfortunately, on the last 20 minutes of the episode, the video cut out for YouTube, so, that will be replaced with some clips of Vaughn's fighting experiences and him doing the nunchucks. So apologies for that. But if you're listening on a podcast, then it won't make no difference at all. So lesson learned, always make sure that there's storage on the camera. <laughs> but aside from that, I hope you enjoy, guys. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and all that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And if you think someone will benefit from this episode or is thinking of going into mixed martial arts, then please share that with them as well. You never know who it might benefit. Enjoy the show, guys. We're rolling. Cool. Just going for it. How are you? I'm blessed. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm great blessed. to have you on. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to learning all about this MMA in general because I feel like a lot of people are going to learn from this today. Okay. Um, you're a, tell us a bit about your journey. You're MMA, UFC, you got into UFC. What What did you start off doing? I started, uh, started like traditional mix. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have someone in the background trying to sneakily go out. It's not working. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, started off um, traditional kung fu styles. Okay. When I was younger, like uh, Wing Chun, Hong Ga, Lao Ga, uh, Five Animal Style, um, Four Kung. How old was you when you got into it then? Uh, pretty late actually. I was like thirteen years old. Mm. When I first started. That's not late though, is it? For some people are like. Yeah. True. But if. I'm starting my, my kids now, so right. they're like two, three, uh, two, four, and seven, so, and yeah, so. That's good. That's pretty early. So what got you into that then? Uh, just watching the movies, really. I just like uh, Van Damme movies. Bloodsport was the first film I saw that really got me wanting to do martial arts, you mm. know? And then when I saw Bruce Lee, it was over. I was going to say, <laughs> from what I've seen on your socials, like, uh-huh. Bruce Lee's been a big inspiration, hasn't he? Yeah, 100%. You uh, have a little look of him, actually. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people say that. But, um, mm. no, I mean, as soon as I saw Bruce in The Big Boss, that was the first Bruce Lee film I saw, I was instantly hooked, just mm. with his stage presence, his charisma, his, his martial art. And I just want... I knew that's what I wanted to do from there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I was 13. So, yeah. so is that, is your actual name Vaughn Lee or is that where you got the inspiration through no, Bruce yeah. Lee? No, no, he was, I got the inspiration from Bruce Lee. Um, okay. F- when I was young, uh, my, my real, my... You don't have to my, say my real fa- name no, if you want. My father's, <laughs> my father's name is Harvey. Okay. So I used to go by Harvey. But... I didn't have a good relationship with my with my dad and stuff. Okay. And I was always looking for a father figure around because my dad was never around. So, but Bruce was like a father figure to me more right. than a hero. He's like a father figure, you know. Yeah. I used to read all his books, study from him, and uh, and, and everything. And um, even my mom used to call me Bruce around the house. Really? Like, oh, call me a Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, was that a Jamaican accent? Yeah. Like? <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I come from. Jamaican household, yeah. Okay. Well, my dad's Irish, my mom's Jamaican. Oh, ah, okay. But See, I thought you might have had like some kind of Asian yeah. and yeah. and Jamaican. Well, my, my nan's my nan's name is Lee Sylvia Lee. Okay. Yeah, she married and uh, to Marx. She got changed her name to Marx. Right. So maybe Bruce Lee is a distant relative. You never know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's right. where it's come from. <laughs> 
So you got into yeah. uh, you got into Wing Chun, you say, and a few different Wing martial arts. Yeah. Where did you go down the UFC route then? How did that come about? Uh, uh, just doing martial arts. Uh, then I started Bruce Lee style Jeet Kune Do, which right. is it's people say it's it, Bruce Lee's the godfather of uh, mixed martial arts because he was the first one to cross train and bring different styles in into one. You know. Yeah. So I started I started his style, his form of martial art. Uh, just going learning from uh, a guy called Paul Kelly. <clears throat> he was he's, he's still to this day he's an amazing instructor, amazing martial artist. You know, I, I owe him a lot. You know, mm. because he he showed me a lot of things, showed me the way. You know, uh, from there you just you, I just progressed and became good. Started doing jujitsu competitions and stuff. And then you get you get to a level where you want to kind of just test yourself. Other than just fighting on the street all the time, you want to kind of compete. You want mm. to kind of test, see how good you really are. You know, when you get to a certain level. Well, I did anyway. Mm, mm. And um, yeah, from there, I, just, I booked myself for a, a cage fight. Right. Uh, went pro straight away. You know, back Bloody then hell. there wasn't really any amateur amateur pro. You really there. actually dialing this down. This is a big deal. Like. <laughs> You you were a former UFC fighter. That is like a big deal. Like so, if, when you did the cage fight, is that where the, is UFC something that you get spotted into doing? And yeah, okay. So UFC is the the uh, the biggest organization you can fight in. Yeah, biggest mixed martial arts organization. So first, you have to start off the on the low level. So most people nowadays start amateur, right? Build up into pro. But I went straight into pro. I lost my first three fights though because I okay. I didn't know anything about. How to fight really, you know? But I knew I knew martial arts, but I didn't. I wasn't really well. I was okay at fighting, but wasn't really that good. Yeah, mm. I was fighting with better guys all the time. <clears throat> so after after I lost a few, uh, went back to the drawing board a couple of times, and you just you just stick at it, you know. You just keep going, keep going, keep going, and then I started winning and started winning, and started winning, and then you get ranked in in the UK. So. Uh, Became number, I don't know, fifteen in the mm. UK. Oh, then you win again. Oh, he's number twelve. You, you just keep climbing the ladder, you know. And then became number one, <clears throat> and then after that, I remember, I remember getting the call. I was number one for, I don't know, probably a year or two. Wow. And then I got a call from the UFC. I got a call from a manager, and the manager said, "UFC just called," and I was like, "What?" I remember screaming down the whole place like ah! yeah I could imagine jeez yeah. that's that's huge yeah it's, I think it's like the biggest news like any mixed martial artist could ever dream for you know? mm. I think it would have been so easy for a lot of people as well when you said you lost the first three fights mm -hmm. to give up yeah of course I mean any normal person probably would have, <laughs> but uh, I, I always knew I wanted to be better or we wanted to be better 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 just mm. improve myself all the time you know so i look at the losses as learning curves okay oh damn i need to get better at this oh, i lost i lost via the arm but i need to yes. learn how to defend the arm but you know the ba i'm losing by basic stuff that i should i should know you know yeah it's um like you said it, i think so many people can learn from from that because one time you lose a fight second time you lose a fight yeah you know, so many people give up and that goes across the board. If you, if you fail, you keep going and yes, try again. Yes. If you got to the fourth, fifth, sixth, you still go, like you still try, yeah. definitely. So it's amazing. So have you met the, have you met the big man Joe Rogan then? Joe Rogan, yeah, I met him, my second fight, I met Joe Rogan. Yeah. I'm trying to have my podcast as big as his. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Joe. What's he Joe like? Uh, uh, Is he as nice as he seems on, on the podcast? Well, I only spoke to him briefly. Mm. It was, he interviewed me after my second fight. I won via uh, submission armbar in Japan, and he came in the, the, the cage and interviewed me. And I, was, I was blown away. Yeah. Joe was right there, like ah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, can imagine. And uh, yeah, it's was, it was surreal. You know, it's a dream come true. I, I, my second fight, also, I fought one of my favorite fighters, uh, a Japanese legend called Kijamamoto. Okay. He's a legend in Japan. He he hasn't he never he. He hasn't been submitted until I submitted him. Oh! He fought all the all the best grapplers, all the best submission guys like Hoyler Gracie, Kaul Uno, uh, Genki Sudo, all these great submission artists, and they couldn't submit him. So when I submitted him, it kind of put my name up there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, 
Wow. I bet that felt unreal. Like... That was unreal. Fighting my favourite fighter in Japan. And submitting. <laughs> I was like, and then submitting him. And I got a, a bonus for that submission as well. I think it was $65,000 at the time. Yeah, it was, it was all surreal. Yeah. yeah. But like, you know, obviously that's, that's big money, but, you know, people don't see the injury side of it and what you have to go through and the training. People just think, oh yeah, I'll do a fight. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realise what goes into yeah, it. There's so much sacrifice that, yeah. Yeah. So like, with that, have you ever been badly injured? Because obviously there's some tough moves in UFC, isn't there? Yeah. I've, twice I've been badly injured. Once I uh, was, I got knocked out. This, this fight against... Yuri Alcantara was in Germany. He's from Brazil. Right. From the favelas. And uh, I was shit scared of this guy. When they gave me the contract, I was like... Yeah. The manager was like, look how much money it is. I was like, fuck the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die. Okay, fuck it. Let's take it. Yeah. And all through that camp, I was shitting myself. I was bricking it. And I was like, fuck. And I was trained. But what was, why I was afraid is because I... My training at the time wasn't what I wanted it to be. I was training with guys that should have been beating me up, you know what I mean, putting it on me. And I was training with kind of amateur guys and I was like, oh, no, no. He mm. was kind of playing in my head. And I knew he was hungry. He's coming from Brazil, the favela. He's, he wants it, you know what I mean? And that was always going the blood. My head. <laughs> he wants this. He, he's fighting for his family and I'm just, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> doing it for fun. And I'm like, fuck. And then... Yeah, so all the all through that fight camp, I was I've never felt terror like it before. I'm just mm. shaking and trembling. As soon as I got into the cage, boom! All the fear just went, and I thought, "Fuck it, I'm here now. Nothing I can can I swear on this?" Of course you can. Okay, yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, um, and then I went in, stiff as hell, threw a kick, and he just he went boom, hit me with one shot, and everything went black in slow motion. Ever since snatch. Yeah, I don't remember him too. I have a really bad memory, there's, but... There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a scene where Brad Pitt is falling. You really like, did that scene. And that, this is how it felt. I was falling, everything was black, hit the floor, boom. Then he came down and went, bang, bang, bang. Smashed this orbital bone, smashed my eye, everything went white, bing. And I was looking around in this white room, like, where am I, where am I, where am I, where am I? Where am I thinking this in my head? And then... The, my vision came back from the middle where it was, and it was the ref going oh, yeah looking at me like the look on his face was it was fear you know and I was like whoa and then after that I've never been afraid to get knocked out or I've been you know it, it kind of changed me that did you know yeah. it kind of put me in a different place like I felt like I wasn't here, but I was somewhere else. You know? mm, I suppose with you fighting, like you said, fighting people that weren't at that level before, and like you hadn't experienced that. Yeah. Like, so when did when you started coming round? What was you thinking? Like, I was like, no, I was like, where am I? Where am I? And when my vision came back, the ref was looking at me. I was like, oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, <laughs> just been knocked out. Yeah, Jeez. so I had to have a plate put in this eye. Really? That's where I was going with this. Yeah, I had a plate put in this eye. Because my 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 eye cheek my eyeball was in my cheekbone, so a plate it was a fibrous plate as well. So they put the plate in and it dissolves over time, and while your natural bone knits back together, kind of thing. And now I've got double vision. If I look like this, I can see two of you. Yeah, okay. Isn't a bad thing. <laughs> but if I go like this, I can see I can see normal. But yeah. Right. Okay. And the second one was a kick to the arm. I just blocked a kick wrong, and it broke my. Uh, on the, on the bone? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got a plate here just holding this bone together. Yeah. So you can't go through the metal detectors then? Are you all right? I've been, I've been through a couple, yeah. I've been through a couple. It doesn't go up. Oh, yeah. that's good. I wonder what it's made out of. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that just proves that you've got to have a passion for these things because it's no joke. You Absolutely. can get seriously injured and yeah, yeah. in your case, you was lucky yeah, with that. Yeah, Yeah, because yeah, that could have been 10 times worse. Like you said, you could have actually lost your vision fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's mental. It's mental. <laughs> you've you've got to have a passion for it. So I seen that you sixth. You're the sixth most efficient striker in UFC history. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, I like to think so. Yeah. Okay, still. <laughs> I like to think so. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, don't miss about you then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> striking, striking. I came from a striking background. Right. Know, and uh, I think I understand striking a lot 
more than I do the ground. Mm. So striking is more of my passion than jujitsu or wrestling. But I still like them. Mm. I still I still have to do them to to learn how, to be able to fight everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So do you, do you still do UFC then, or are you not no, no, competing I'm, anymore? I'm not competing anymore. If 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 an opportunity arises, you would do it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, because mm. I'm staying ready. I stay fit, stay healthy. You know, I just train all the time. Like I train like I'm. Training for a fight, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm constant because I'm so used to just training, training, training. That's all I do now. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. It's just, I train, train, train all the time. Yeah, because I can imagine, like, when, when you're training for a fight, the training is obviously going to be so intense. Yeah. And when you was training to fight this guy, Brazilian guy, mm-hmm. what was his name again? Yuri Alcantara. They've all got yeah. good names, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you was training to fight this guy, obviously, you would have proper put the work in then, wouldn't you, with, with it being a big fight? Yeah, for, like... Uh, what I could do, like getting my cardio, my fitness, my strength, all that was looked after. It's just having the sparring partners, the right people to to train to spar with, you know, mm. for the for the timing and, uh, and and stuff like that. That that was the hindrance. In, in that so, what would time. be the typical training routine to sort of prepare for a fight then? Uh, everyone's different, you know. Right. Everyone trains differently. Uh, depends what background they're from what style they have you know or who they're preparing for you know right. they could be pre- pre- preparing for a ground fighter so they'll probably do more ground fighting so they study the fighter as well exactly. to see how they yeah, try to, find the weaknesses yeah you need to yeah. know your opponent and then mm. uh, exploit his weaknesses yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay so when you're doing sparring then is it hard to find someone to <laughs> spar with um it's not hard to find someone, no. And if you if you go out looking, you know. Mm. But where I was at at the time, um, it was there was loads of politics. Right. So they didn't want people coming in. They didn't want me going out just in case I find someone better. You know, stuff like this. So okay. They just kept it knit knit thing. But um, I believe you have to go out and find the best trainers. Uh, and, and learn from them you know what I mean not mm. one person has the uh, the answer so you need to go and learn whatever you can and, and build you, yourself your, your own style yeah and that's that's what you're doing now isn't it are you are you're training people now yeah. for is it in general personal training or are you training people for fights yeah I train people for fights boxing fights MMA fights kickboxing fights okay yeah, and, yeah, yeah all, all general yeah. yeah that's good are you enjoying it yeah I love it that's, that's my passion you know yeah Unless I'm training my wife and it's like... <laughs> you know? What's your wife's name again? Cam. Cam. Sorry, Cam. <laughs> I so you went over... When, when did you go to Phuket now? Ooh, 2000... I've been going back and forth to Phuket since since my first UFC fight in 2011. All the years were on this one, yeah. Yeah, 2011. So I've been going back and forth, but I moved there to live about three years ago yeah and um put the whole family over got a job at Phuket top team that's the gym I first went to in 2011 right did my fight camps and stuff and uh yeah loved it out there that was uh, a dream of mine to go out and teach high level guys mm. not just high level guys there's just tourists coming in as well you know but I, I love to train everyone but my passion was to show the high level guys a little something different as mm. well you know, something that may, maybe that haven't seen before okay um, uh, and just living out there because Thailand's like a, a fight island you know uh, well Phuket anyway it's like beautiful everyone's mm. everyone's training most people they're just running down the street it makes you want to get up and, and, yeah. and train do you know what I mean because everyone's on the same kind of journey mm. it's, it's beautiful I love Thailand I went over uh, for three weeks with Nick and when we went like we went all over, so we went to Chiang Mai and a few other places. And then when we went to Phuket, because we were struggling to find decent, like, good food. Like, I say good food, like, just yeah. gym, gym food, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, like, rice and dumplings and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, what's some decent food now? I'm bored of the dumplings. <laughs> and then we went to Phuket and um, went down, I don't know what the street's called. It's where the... Um, well, the gyms are. The Tiger. Is it Tiger? Yeah, so tired. Yeah, so it was a long street and it's just got gyms and like, I was in my element, like gyms and just food and different things. And we went down there and I was like, oh my God, all this time this place was here. Um, 
So yeah, it, I imagine being in Phuket was like, you would have been in your element as well. Yeah, 100%. How long was you out there for? About three years. Yeah. Three years. Well, I came back in November right. this year. Yeah, so yeah, just three years, yeah. Um, how, was the, what, how did that compare to training over there to here then? Oh, well, um, over here is a lot of on the road, on, in, on the motorway, you know, you go into the gym, you, you train for a bit and then you, you come back, you're sitting in traffic, you mm. get back, your back's aching and all this More stuff. More rushed. Yeah. yeah, it's like, a, it's still a hustle and bustle, whereas <clears throat> Thailand, sabai sabai, you know, it's like very chill, you know? Yeah. And you can, <clears throat> you can train, go to the beach, chill, then back to train. Train on the beach. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, 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 it's beautiful, it's perfect. You can go for a swim, go train, go for a swim, come back, train again. Or just go for some something easy to eat on the, on the street, you know. It's it's so simple and easy life. Yeah, you know? yeah. I used to just walk out with my shorts, and no shoes, no top, just, just walk in the street, just free, you know. Just yeah, amazing. Sounds like a dream right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is that where you did your acting then? Acting here actually as well. I've I've got a few acting friends and stuff, but yeah, yeah. Um, Talk us through that then. What what was your was your acting out martial arts? Yeah, well, uh, the the gym that uh, I was teaching at Phuket Top Team, it um, they have a video videographer. Okay. Yeah. So um, they do videos and stuff for the gym, and he's like, "Ah, oh, we should we should make short films and stuff like this." I was like, oh, "Yeah, cool, let's do it." So we would just meet up and write scripts and put things together you know and just film short short clips and short films and stuff like this uh, yeah and but that's something I've always been interested in just watching martial arts films I've mm. always wanted to do that also you know but actually fighting and doing martial arts was my first uh, main thing right the movies and stuff will come so you literally are a little Bruce Lee that yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so going back to the UFC then like you you can tell us as much as or as little as you want why did you actually stop? Uh, I got, well, I got cut from the UFC. So my first fight was in Birmingham. Okay. That was a massive fight uh, for me anyway. Came out, I was like, wow, I just seen like a sea of people. It was like crazy. I was the first fight on the card and I lost via a uh, split decision. Okay. And I was like, damn, in front of my home crowd, and Birmingham, I was like, crying and everything. Then my second fight won, third fight lost, uh, fourth fight won, fifth fight lost, sixth fight down. won. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like boom, boom, mm. boom, boom, boom. It's like, fuck. So every time I'd win, I'm like, yeah, go back, lose, fuck. I have to train harder, train smarter, win, yes. Go back, lose, back. So I was like learning as I'm going, you know, learning. At, and then my last, I got knocked out. And then coming back from that fight was... Uh, was was difficult for me after being knocked out and stuff mm. and then uh i came back i decided to go a weight lower because i was fighting at 135 pounds and i decided to fight at 125 pounds okay which was bad decision uh, yeah, very bad decision really because I, I never never made that weight before and i made the weight but it just killed me i had i couldn't rehydrate I was I was sick. I was throwing. I stand. I stood on the scales. I had to wear glasses because my eyes were so sunk into my head, and I was just like ready to faint. And then I stepped off the scales, went be behind the curtain, and just collapsed on the floor. And just up and like this, oh, like just shaking in a fit. What made you make that decision then to go so low with weight? Uh, At the time, did it? Because I thought I could beat. All the flyweights. <laughs> ah, like, okay. I could take that division, you know. Yeah, but that, it depends on what you are naturally, like genetically as well, isn't yes. it? If you're not made for that weight, then that's yeah. too low for exactly. you. Yeah, but saying that, I, I wasn't really a big bantamweight either. Right. I mean, I'm not really a, a big 135 pounds. I was fighting, still fighting bigger guys because they'll cut massive weight and then put it back on, and mm. like, yeah, these guys are huge. So, um, but even even the, when I cut down and then fought at uh, flyweight, the guy that I fought was still bigger than me. You know, <laughs> still longer. And I was like, oh, <laughs> can't win. Yeah, you can't <laughs> win. But again, I lost that on a split decision decision as well. Only because 
he well, he's a better fighter on the day to be honest mm. but the weight cut killed me like he had me in a submission in the first round and it took all of my energy just to hang on in there you know and then I, I switched it around got took his back and I couldn't finish him because my arms were so blown so tired I couldn't I took his neck and I was like I had nothing to squeeze mm. so then the bell went and then got back to my corner my corner was like how you feel and I was like fucked <laughs> can't, can't move can't move my arms couldn't do anything yeah. so the next two rounds I was just surviving you know just blocking blocking every time I threw a shot I would land them but I couldn't I couldn't do anything you know, I was just you know, a, a, nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare that must be such a mental like roller coaster as well like obviously you're doing these fights and then coming away from them and knowing you could have had it if maybe you had a bit more weight and yeah, yeah. yeah such a mental like it is, it's all a mental game to be honest it's, mm. it's very even when you push your body it's a mental game you know yeah the, the stronger this is the stronger you can make absolutely 100% you're right <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when you um, when you finished UFC then how did you feel after all that did you feel a little bit lost like you yeah. didn't know what to do yeah kind of because you kind of got to the top and then like like, where do I go from here? What do I do now? Do mm. you know what I mean? And then I didn't have the same drive to train for fights. So I was taking fights, but really wasn't training as hard as I, I, I should. Do you mm. know what I mean? It was like, oh, it's just, a, it's just a, sh- a fight on this show. It's just a fight on this show. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to yeah. go in there and fight. And really, I should have just tried to get back to the UFC. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, uh, I don't know. Mm. I, can't, I, can't, I, was, I was kind of depressed. He put me on, on a downer coming out of the I US. can imagine a lot of fighters go through that though. Yeah. Mm. You kind of think, mm, well, if I'm not a UFC fighter, I've tr- been training all my life to get here, now I'm not there, what am I? You know? mm. From the age of 13 as well. Like, yeah. How old are you now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 40 next year. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're watching on YouTube, you don't look it at <laughs> all. You. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're training people and you're showing people your talents now and you never know, you might get back into it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we never know. Well, if the opportunity comes up... I'm you wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say no. You'd be ready. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I'm training with, the, like, right now, I'm training with the high-level guys in the UK, you know? UFC guys in the UK, Cage Warriors guys, Bellator guys, and they're the, they're the highest level, you know? And I'm still hanging with these guys, you know? Dusting them up, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm. St- I know I've still got it. They could say, "Oh, why don't you fight again? Why don't you fight again?" Yeah. And I'm like, mm. but yeah, I, I still feel like I, I can. I still can. You know. So. So would you get into any that. other fighting style? Would you ever like venture into? Because you said you've like sort of toyed with a few different styles, haven't you? And mm-hmm. obviously, you fell into UFC. Mm-hmm. Would you ever go down like BJJ route, like more serious or a different mm-hmm. different route? To be honest, when I first started, because I'm a, a striker at heart, I didn't really like the ground. I was like, oh. we were like, you have to do it if you want to fight MMA. I was like, okay. So I, yeah. I, got, I, got, I got good at it. Then I started liking it because I was starting to submit people. We always don't like yeah. stuff we can't do it. That's <laughs> yeah, what it exactly. is. <laughs> like, oh. But then as I started liking it, I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. But saying that now, I don't think I would go down the jujitsu route. Still, still not... Uh, as a whole, anyway. Yeah. Mm. I, li- I like to put it all together. Yeah, mm. yeah, mingle it all in. Because you're nunchucks as well, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I play with a lot of weapons, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. watch, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> pull the nunchucks out in a minute. Got some nunchucks and sore, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, demo for you. For Self-taught? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-taught. Although, although uh, a guy did show me some uh, techniques in Thailand. Uh, a guy from China, I was training him. And he saw one of my videos and he goes, oh, I'll show you some stuff. And he showed me a little, little, little thing. So, yeah. yeah, so he just kind of picked up a bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. So when you're doing like these different like fights and styles and stuff, like, do you ever get people, you get negative people anywhere, but do you ever get people like saying, I don't know, maybe people around your family, friends saying like, you know, they're worried for your, for your yeah. health when you're fighting and stuff, which is it's natural, not so much negative, that's probably the wrong word. Mm. Anyone that puts you off doing it. All the time. <laughs> you're not still fighting, are you? Uh, yeah. Nah, like my mum's friends and stuff, they're like, you're not still fighting, are you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, oh, oh, oh. I suppose when you don't really understand the sport that much though as well, it's exactly. hard to understand, isn't it? Yeah. 
if you, yeah, if you don't watch, well, if you do watch it and you think, bloody hell, this is brutal, or mm. you don't really understand the techniques of what they're doing. You know. Yeah, I bet a typical one you get is like, look at them both, grown men rolling around yeah. the floor. <laughs> oh, actually, I'll get him, I'll get him on the floor. Yeah, really. Yeah. 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 Punch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you deal with all that then? Like, do you just shrug it off? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I don't really explain. No. To them. It's, it's, it's what I do, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, they'll, they'll never understand. You know? No, yeah. you just got to do your thing, yeah, innit? Just do what you got to do, man. Do, do you? Oh, with, um, with all my guests, I do a final four. We done already? Well, have you got anything else you want no, to speak okay, about? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, for half an hour. You can, you can. Go on, go on. Is there anything else you'd like to speak about? No, no, go on. Are you sure? Your house, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. No, it's not talking I about want to change the background though. To what colour? I don't know, something more fancy, like, you know, like the brick. Like yeah. the brick, yeah, something yeah, like that. I think you cool. look good in the background then. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, actually, I've got a question for you. What's your favourite move? My favourite move? Ooh. Probably the split entry. I have no idea what that is. Do you want to okay, explain? So if someone, the best, I think the best time to hit someone is when they're trying to hit you. Yeah? Mm. There's three times when you can hit someone. Before they hit you, at the same time as they hit you, or after they hit you, try to hit them. Yeah? Okay. And the best time is during. So he's going to get up and do it then. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm, if they're throwing a strike, yeah. there's, there's gaps where they leave targets for me to hit okay yeah if they're like this they're already defending yeah so this is before this is during so it's when they throw a jab to my head i'm going to slip off the outside let their jab pass and hit them at the same time okay so it's like they throw a punch boom and you hit them at the same time that was that fast to even see it (laughs) (laughs) but that's a split entry anyway okay uh, that's probably one of my favorite moves See, on a couple of clips that I've seen from you, you do a few sneaky kicks as well, don't you? Yeah, I love kicks. Like little yeah. sneaky little ones. Side kicks, spinning back kicks, Yeah, like yeah. You, you don't see it coming kind of yeah, thing, and yeah. it's like, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you need to train me. Whenever you're ready, man. Whenever you're ready. Gonna, we'll, we'll sort it out. We'll, we'll make it happen. Well for your fans, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. it. I'll get the sneaky kicks, and I could just, you know, if anyone gives me any cheek, I can just throw a kick in there, can't I? Yeah, <laughs> like you taught me it's all right yeah final four the reason i'm doing it now is because i noticed the final four sometimes i say final four questions but it's never really fire questions like so people can never tend to answer with a sentence it tends to okay. yeah so that's why we'll do oh. it now because it might it might come for a bit so they're not they're not yes or no questions no 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 you can literally answer as long as you want okay. yeah so if you could go back and change one thing, what would you change? I don't want to hear no regrets because we get that one all the time. Just one thing, if you had the chance. To change one thing? Yeah, anything. I probably would have went to my granddad's funeral mm. instead of going to Japan. Okay. Yeah. So you was in Japan at the time? No, I booked tickets to go to Japan. Yeah. And then my granddad passed. And I was like, oh, shit, but I could have to Japan. Mm. And I went to Japan. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you regret that then? Is that something that yeah. you feel like maybe you could have gone to Japan at a later time or something? Well, I've been to Japan like four times oh, now. Oh, so. right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. If you had the opportunity to fight anyone or compete against anyone, who would it be? Or have you already done that? Yeah, I've done that. The Brazilian... No, the, uh, the Japanese guy. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, he's... Uh, he was... I actually... I remember watching him as when I was younger, and I was thinking, I'd love to fight this guy. He's just so amazing, you know. He's my hero. Mm. But you just want to fight your heroes. You want to rise to their level, you know. And uh, I did, and I beat him, and it was a dream come true. Mm. But he actually passed away, and that... Every time I think about the fight now, it, make, it makes me emotional. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. It's like a, it is a massive achievement though, because you're like, you've met your hero in a way, haven't you? Yeah. And, actually, and fought him. I actually went and trained with him one year before, oh, before wow. I was in the UFC. Yeah, And then a year later, I got into the UFC, and a year later, I was fighting him, and I was like, this is... So what was he like when, when obviously, meeting you after, when you was having a fight? Was he like, oh, I don't, I don't think it's you. Me. He probably never really? Did. No, I don't know. He probably, never, yeah, he probably did. He probably did. Yeah. If you train with him. He was so good, he didn't speak to me after the fight. He was just, oh, really? Yeah, he was nowhere to be seen after that. 
do you get that often with many fighters then because you know because it's a professional sport isn't it so you know there's it, it's that sort of like shake your hand kind of thing after for a fight or whatever do you get many people sort of resenting after yeah I mean some people get in their feelings you know some people are just like oh it's just a sport you know it's just the name of the game but most of the guys um, I speak to after and mm. just, we probably exchange like gloves or t-shirts do you know what I mean I've got stuff from my old opponents at home you know so mm. yeah um, it depends on how, how they're feeling you know, mm. how they're feeling have you ever resented someone after you fought them? Uh, I can't say I have. No. 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 Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think a lot of people, like you said, become resentful after a fight. It can't be like that if you're having a fight, can you? No. So advice for someone wanting to start out in UFC then? To start out in UFC? Or to fight, uh, start out in MMA, should I say? Or, yeah, I suppose, yeah. yeah. I'd say find a, find a good gym. Uh, there's a few that I could recommend. Fearless MMA in Birmingham and uh, Renegade Jiu Jitsu. <clears throat> Shameless plugs there. <laughs> uh, yeah, just find a good, decent gym with uh, decent coaches, you know, uh, that are really passionate about helping you. you know right. I mean? They want to help you and want you have good things for you. Um, yeah, just find a gym, just do as they say, just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and once if you want to look for for other other way, other martial arts, go go out and learn anything you can, man. Just to build your own own style. You know, one thing will work for someone, and one th thing won't work for someone. You know, everyone's everyone's different. Yeah. Height, weight. You know, everyone's everyone fights differently. Yeah, because I suppose with with UFC, like that's something that you need to be more spotted to do, U isn't it? Yeah, UFC is like. Uh, you have to you have to become really good yeah. to go to go in UFC so yeah you need to start off you have to start off on the the local scene fight on the local shows win as many fights as you can that's what UFC wants to see they want to see wins 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 they want to see really good performances as well you know so they want to see finishes how you finish a person yeah, mm. they don't want boring fights. You see, they don't. They want you to yeah. lay on someone and just hold them down and win by points. You know, they're looking for you to give people a shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it's a it's a money maker. Yeah, yeah, of course. And obviously, people will be watching you for a while. You don't even know who's watching you, do you? And then exactly. obviously, like exactly. yourself, someone. Yeah, because they have scouts. You know, scouts that go to shows and and watch yeah. you and, and stuff like this. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Anything's possible. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, you just can't give up from. The first few failures, Losses, can exactly. you? Yeah. You know, fall down nine, rise up ten, you know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so what's your daily habits? Something that you do every day? Something that I do every day. <laughs> 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 Breathe. Um, it could be training related. Do you train every day? Yeah, every yeah. single day, yeah. So what's your routine every day then? Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't give you a routine because... It's different. Yeah, I have... I have I try to train in between my PTs or sometimes with my PTs, do you know what I mean? So, depending on who I've got, when I've got them, or some, some people cancel, so if they're cancelled, I'm going to go train them, mm. okay, do you know what I mean? So, uh, it, it all depends on, I wish I had a set, set um, schedule. If, you, if you're training for a fight, you need a set schedule, you, know yeah. you need to wake up early, train. What I used to do when I was training for a fight is wake up at uh, six, Go for a sprint, hill sprints, come back home, sleep, go to the gym, train at 10, like maybe some wrestling for an hour, go back home, relax, come back in the uh, afternoon, like five, six, and probably do some striking or something. And just uh, do that through that. Through Continuously, that. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes switch up the, switch up the um, routine. So instead of going for a sprint, you go for a swim mm. or you would uh, do strength and conditioning, you know go to the gym do jujitsu and then go back in the evening and do wrestling or something like that do you know what I mean so you just three times a day you just go, I sound tired I just like, yeah. feel tired just listening to that <laughs> but that's why you need to go you need to go back home and nap you know what I mean you yeah you need that yeah. sleep yeah. and do you yeah. you get up early don't you yeah. Yeah. and do you go to bed early as well to try and get that sleep in that way <sighs> try to try don't to always kids, happen. it's difficult now though. yeah you know, how many you got four <sighs> yeah you got, you got no chance to sleep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Youngest is two. two. Yeah, you can get sleep in front of a few years. <laughs>
Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's welcome. been great. Um, where can people find you on socials? Uh, you can find me on Instagram on Vaughnly. Just Vaughnly, one word. Um, I'm not really on Facebook anymore. Just Instagram, to be honest. Do you have a website or...? Yeah, but I don't use it. Don't use it. Main place is Instagram. But yeah, main place is Instagram. You can check me on there. Send me a message, whatever you want to do. If you're inter interested in training, just drop me a message. Uh, I'm in the Midlands area, in uh, Warsaw, Birmingham. So Yeah, you get loads of messages now saying, train me, teach me the kick. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. You're welcome.